So the next set of categories we're going to look at are verbs, verb phrases, and sentences. So a first critical observation is that verbs in English can be subcategorized into distinct subtypes, uh, which have rather different properties. So I'm going to use the, the symbol VI to refer to intransitive verbs, VT to refer to transitive verbs, and VD to refer to ditransitive verbs. And so, for example, an intransitive verb would be sleeps or walks or laughs. A transitive verb would be something like sees or saw or likes. Ditransitive would be gave. And we'll have various uh, rules in the grammar expressing this. So, for example, VI can go to sleeps. Might be one rule in the grammar, or VI goes to walks. We would have VT goes to sees, and similar entries for saw and likes. And we would have VD goes to gave, for example. Now, given these different verb types, we have different ways of constructing what's called a verb phrase. So let's look at this first one. So a verb phrase can just be uh, an intransitive verb. So I can get a structure like the following. So VP, and then VI underneath it, and then sleeps. Um, a second example here would be the following. So VP goes to VT. And then I could, for example, have Cs. And notice that a transitive verb always precedes a noun phrase to form a verb phrase. So a verb phrase can be made up of a transitive verb followed by a noun phrase. So I could have Cs, the dog, as another verb phrase here. And then finally, if we look at this ditransitive rule, I can have a verb phrase which is something like the following. So VD uh, gave. So now I have two noun phrases following the verb. And the first one might be the dog, the ball. OK? So notice that a verb phrase is generally made up of a, some verb followed by zero or more noun phrases, or at least the verb phrases we've seen here have this form. Um, in transitive verb, there are zero noun phrases. Transitive, there's one. Ditransitive, there are two different noun phrases. OK, so that's um, first simple set of rules for VP. And actually, we'll come back to a few more a little later in a few more slides. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is a rule which can construct a sentence. So this rule says that the symbol S, which stands for sentence, can be formed by a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. So actually, I can use this rule to construct sentences like the man sleeps. So notice I have S goes to NPVP here, and the man, and then this VP goes down to sleeps. Similarly, I could have an NP here. So this would again be the man. So the man sees the dog. And we have here, we could have the man gave the dog a ball. OK, so we're starting to see the structure now of entire sentences. Top down, an S rewrites as an NP versus uh, followed by a VP. This NP is critically the subject in each case. Okay, so this is the subject, this is the subject, this is the subject. And then the verb phrase generates some verb followed by zero or more noun phrases. Zero in the intransitive case, one in the transitive case, two in the ditransitive case. Okay, so uh, we can construct many sentences now given these basic rules. Let's add one more rule to this grammar concerning verb phrases. And this says that a verb phrase can be itself composed of a verb phrase followed by a prepositional phrase. So notice we see prepositional phrases cropping up again. Earlier, we had seen a rule which said n bar could rewrite as an n bar followed by pp. Now we have a rule which says a vp can be formed by a vp followed by a pp. OK, so let me give you some examples. So if we apply this rule. Um, we can have sleeps, and this prepositional phrase would have some structure, sleeps in the car, for example. Okay. 
Um, we'll give you another example. We could have this VP um, using a ditransitive verb. So, you know, gave the dog a ball. And this prepositional phrase could, for example, say on Wednesday. That would be another prepositional phrase. OK? So we see this basic structure. We have VP uh, formed by a VP followed by another prepositional phrase. This prepositional phrase generally adds some information, for example, about the location of um, the verb, or the, sorry, of the event described by the verb, or the time of the event described by the verb phrase, and so on and so on. Now, it's worth noting that this is, again, a recursive rule in that I can apply it um, multiple times. So I could have another application of this rule up here and have another prepositional phrase. So it could, for example, say, gave the, the dog a ball on Wednesday in the car, where this second prepositional phrase adds yet more information to this underlying event described by this verb. OK, moving on, we've seen how to construct S, uh, the sentence category. Um, now we're going to add another part of speech, which I'll use uh, comp for. So comp is going to rewrite uh, so words, for example, like that. Actually, that's the one complementizer we'll focus on now, the word that. And this gives a new category, which we'll call an S bar. So we have a rule saying an S bar can be formed by a complementizer followed by S. And so, for example, we could have an S bar with the following structure. So that, and then we have an S, and again, I'll hide the details of the past tree under here. But this S could, for example, be the man sleeps. OK, so very important structure in English. You frequently see, as we'll see, um, subordinate clauses in sentences formed by a word like that followed by some sentence. So let's extend the grammar and see where these exactly fit in. And for this, we'll actually need some, some more verb types. So remember, earlier we saw intransitive, ditransitive, transitive verbs. Um, I'm running out of names for verbs, so I'll just call these V5, V6, and V7. So V5 is a new part of speech, and it's going to be reserved for words like said or uh, reported. So we would have rules like this, V6 is going to be reserved for uh, verbs like told. And V7 is reserved for actually a quite unusual word, which is bet. We'll see why it's unusual in a second. And the new VP rules start to use this S bar. So if I have um, this string here said that the man sleeps, there's actually a, um, this can actually be a VP. And it's composed of a V of type 5. This is said followed by an S bar. Okay, so critically notice that it's possible with these types of words said and reported to form a verb phrase by that verb followed by an S bar. Okay, so said that the man sleeps. Um, if we look at this rule, this says that a verb of type 6 can be followed by an NP and an S bar to form a VP. And that's a phrase like told, the dog, that the mechanic likes the pigeon. Okay, so this is an S bar. It's uh, formed by the word that, which is a complementizer followed by a sentence. And this is an NP. And told can actually take two arguments, firstly an NP and secondly an S bar to form a verb phrase. So this is who's being told, and this is what it's being told. The final rule says that a VP can be composed of a V of type 7, followed by two noun phrases, uh, an S bar. V7, for example, might be bet. This is unusual in that I think there are very, very few verbs which take um, three or more arguments in English. I think three is maybe the most. Um, let's give an example. So I can say bet the pigeon. So this is an NP. $50, this is also an NP. And then this is also an S bar. Okay. So that's an application of this rule here. This is a V of type 7. And this entire phrase here can be a verb phrase.
So ne next, let's talk a little bit about coordination, another part of speech. So CC uh, is a word such as and, or, and we have various rules that make use of these coordinators. And notice that each of these rules has a form where we have some non-terminal on the left-hand side composed of two instances of that same non-terminal with a coordinator. And so I can create phrases like the following. So uh, the man and the dog. So that would be an instance of this rule using the NP. And notice that this rule basically glues together two noun phrases with a coordinator in between them um, to conjoin these two phrases to form a larger phrase. And this coordination type of rule can be used for all of these different uh, phrase types. So I can, for example, say sleeps and likes the dog. So both of these are verb phrases, or both of these subsegments of verb phrases. And I can finally use this rule that says a VP rewrites the VP CCVP to join these two things together.